If you are trying to edit a design, it is often easier to do it if the design is in wireframe. Um, so what happens if you don't start with wireframe? If you either start with an expanded design or if you start with just lettering, how do you get that to an easier kind of format to edit? Um, one of the ways to do that is using the convert to wireframe tool that is in your software. Let's look at how that tool affects uh, both an expanded design as well as lettering. So I opened up one day.ofm. So this is wireframe. This is the original wireframe. If I were to save this as an expanded uh, so that I can look at it as if uh, this was a design that you got in that was just expanded, uh, it'll, it'll look a little different. Um, it won't have that color information. It is purely expanded data. So over on the right hand side, you're only going to see that expanded data, um, which means if I wanted to grab that wireframe edge and kind of rotate it a little bit um, or, or stretch it or manipulate it, that, that gets a little bit more difficult. Um, so again, how do, I, how do I begin to deal with that? One way to do that is to select the element that you want to convert. Um, now, often when I am dealing with convert to wireframe, I will just select the element that I want to deal with, so I'm not changing the entire design. Um, I can grab the whole design and convert the whole thing to wireframe and have all those wireframe pieces, but um, I, I would rather not manipulate uh, parts of the design that I don't need to, just to keep it much closer to the way that the digitizer had intended. So in this case, I'm just going to grab the color that contains the pairs. So I have just the colors that contains the pairs. I'm going to right click on the selected element and you can do this in the project view. You could do this uh, in the view window as well. Go down to operations and go to convert object to wireframe. And when I do that, if I expand this color out now, you will see that it now has all the pieces that make it up in their kind of wireframe uh, format. So I've got my walk normal, I've got my complex fill, another walk normal as a travel, another complex fill. So it, it definitely converted all those pieces. If I go into 3D, um, you'll see that those pieces are still fills. It did its best to mimic the stitch direction and the fill pattern, all of that kind of stuff. So it gets you very, very close to the original, but now it is wireframe. Um, if you have an element that has a hole in it or meets back up with itself or something like that, um, it will look at that and try to figure out what all those pieces are. Um, so what the original started out as, let's say, well, let's just do it. So let's just start a new project. And I'm just going to grab a fill. I'm going to just do a quick little circle here. Um, just for less confusion, I'm going to take out the under. No, you know what? I'm going to leave some of the underlay under there. All right, so in this, I'm kind of starting in the middle. I'm exiting a little bit up. So I have some travel stitches to deal with. Um, it will travel down, travel up. You can see all of that as it sews out. You can see those pieces, you can see the underlay. So let's save this real quick. Let me center it. I'm going to save this as, um, let's just save it as circle example. I'm going to save this as an EXP. All right, so now let's open that EXP. I'm going to select it. I'm just going to copy it and put it in the project that we were just working with. When I copy and paste, uh, all my X and Y locations line up exactly. I'm just going to move this over to the side so that we can see it a little bit better. So in the wireframe data, we have the first one that we did, which is just a complex fill with the entry and exit point. The second one that we did, which is expanded data. And if I, if I slow redraw it, you can see that it has kind of all the same it works the same way. But if I right click, go to operations, and convert this object to wireframe, 
instead of just being a simple circle, it now has this walk normal. So it, it looked at the underlay and it didn't really see it as a loose fill. It saw it as just walk stitches. So now that's just a walk stitch. Then it has this half of the fill. Then it's got the travel stitch, which it sees as a walk stitch. And then it's got the second half of the fill. And then it's got the jump stitch, which is just uh, a machine movement back to zero or back to center. Um, let me just delete that. So that's, you've got what was just one wireframe element. You now have four to deal with. So when you're converting to wireframe, um, how the digitizer saw it is not necessarily how converting it to wireframe will get it. Converting it to wireframe will not necessarily get it back to the way the digitizer had intended. Um, it will get you pieces that you can edit. In fact, you could take these pieces, combine them back together and get very, very close to the original. Um, but just keep in mind when you're converting things like that, it, it starts to kind of change how things work. But at least you can edit it. Okay, so let's look at what uh, converting to wireframe does to lettering. So I'm going to do, uh, let's just do an L and a B. This is something we've done many, many times in, in education videos here at Melco. Um, this time I'm going to do, I think Clarendon. There we go. Um, and I'm going to make the B a separate color. And what I'll do is I will overlap these so that the, the tail of the L comes down um, and goes kind of under the B. So if I drag this over, line this up, and then if I drag it down, and I'm holding control to drag it off that baseline, um, I'm pretty close to what I want, but I have a little bit of the foot of the L that I, I don't want to see anymore. I just want it to kind of connect under and just go. Um, so to do that, I'm going to select the lettering, right click, go to operations, and convert that object to wiring uh, wireframe. Now what that does is instead of being lettering anymore, it is now the pieces that make it up. So now I can go in and I can edit those individual pieces. So if this is what I wanted to deal with, um, I could put another straight point here. I could straighten this line out. I'm going to select all these pieces and delete them. And then I'm going to select these two pieces and I'm going to nudge them over. And I'm using um, Shift and Alt with the arrow keys to nudge them uh, 10 points at a time. And then I'm just going to grab all the color of the red and I'm just going to nudge it down a little bit. And now I've got that kind of lined up the way that I wanted it. Um, to do that, it was very simple for me to take the lettering, convert it to wireframe, and break it apart into all the pieces that make it up. And when you do that with wire uh, with lettering, what it does is it goes back to all the pieces that the digitizer um, used to create those letters. So when you are converting expanded data, it does its best to figure out what it was originally. It may or may not get there, um, but it will get you something that's pretty close and something that is editable. When you are dealing with lettering, the keyboard lettering, it will get you back to all the pieces that the digitizer did. So convert to wireframe, very, very handy tool, but it does work a little bit differently if you're dealing with expanded data or with lettering, keyboard lettering, but converting to wireframe is a very handy tool for getting something back to where you can manipulate those pieces a little bit more easily.